Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using direct stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, there is a eccentric point load 45 kN and it is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the left support. In the span BC, we have a uniformly distributed load 15 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. In the point A, we have a fixed support. In the points B and C, we have hinged supports. The moment of inertia for the span AB is 1.5i and for the span BC it is 2i. Length of the span AB is 6 meter and the length of the span BC is 4 meter. Now we are going to find the fixed end moments and reactions. First let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have an eccentric point load 45 kN. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WAB square upon L square and positive WA square B upon L square. Let us apply the values inside the formulas. W is 45, A is 2, B is 4 and the total length is 6. Finally, for MFAB, we are getting minus 40 kN meter and for MFBA, we are getting 20 kN meter. Now, let us find the vertical reactions. First, I am going to find the reaction RA. For that, I am going to take movement about the point B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The reaction Ra is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 Ra. The point load 45 is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4. So minus 45 into 4 the fixed end movement in the point A is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be negative. And the fixed end movement in the point B is acting in the clockwise direction, so that will be positive. Finally, for the reaction in the point A, we are getting 33.33 kN. Now, let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find the reaction RB1. RA and RB1 are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. 45 is acting downwards, so that will be negative. We have already calculated RA. Let us apply that. Finally, for RB1, we are getting 11.67 kN. Now we are going to find the fixed end moments and vertical reactions in the span BC. In the span BC, we have uniformly distributed load 15 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 15 and L is 4. After the calculation for MFBC, we are getting minus 20 kN meter and for MFCB, we are getting 20 kN meter. Now, let us find the vertical reactions RB2 and RC. In the span BC, we have symmetrical loading. So, we can easily find the vertical reactions. For that, we have to multiply the uniformly distributed load 15 with the distance 4 and then divide that by 2. In this way, for RB2 and RC, 
we are getting 30 kilo newton in the stiffness matrix method when we analyze the beams we have to check the supports in which slope can occur let us see the conditions in the fixed support uh, there will be no slope in the hinged support uh, there will be slope and in the roller support also we have slope in this beam in the points B and C we have hinged supports so in these supports there will be slope so the kinematic indeterminacy of the beam is 2 in the point B we have theta B and in the point C we have theta C now let us make the coordinates diagram in this analysis we have two coordinates we are having the coordinates in the points B and C because in these points only we have the unknown displacement that is the slope since the unknown displacements are the slopes theta B and theta C the coordinates should be taken as the movements the movements should be placed in the clockwise direction we know that in the point B we have theta B and in the point C we have theta C let us see the formula how to find both of them delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix inside the delta matrix P matrix and PL matrix we will have two values because in this analysis there are two coordinates since we have two coordinates the size of the stiffness matrix will be 2 cross 2 that means inside the matrix we will have two rows and two columns inside the delta matrix we will have the values of theta b and theta c in this formula now let us find the pl matrix the PL matrix is the forces or movements developed in the coordinates due to the given load. We know that both of the coordinates are representing the movements. Let us take the first coordinate. It is in the point B. In the point B, we have found two fixed end movements, M of BA and M of BC. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting 0. Our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have found a fixed end moment M of CB. Let us apply that. In this formula, now let us find the P matrix. Inside the P matrix, we will have the final forces or moments acting in the coordinate direction. To find P1, we have to check our first coordinate, which is in the point B. We have to check if there are any movements in the point B. In the point B, there is no external movement. So, we can simply enter 0 inside the matrix. To find P2, we have to check the second coordinate, which is in the point C. In the point C also, there is no movement, so P2 also will be 0. In this formula, we have found P matrix and PL matrix. Now, we are going to find the stiffness matrix. For finding the stiffness matrix, first we have to make the stiffness matrix for the spans AB and BC. This is a stiffness matrix for a span. We have to memorize this matrix so that we can easily find all the movements and reactions. Now let us make the stiffness matrix for the span AB. In the span AB, the moment of inertia is 1.5i. So instead of EI, we have to apply 1.5EI. Length of the span AB is 6, so instead of L, we have to apply 6 on all of the members. In the span AB, we have to find the vertical reactions 
R A R B one and the movements M A B and M B A. In the matrix, the first row and the first column represents R A. The second row and the second column represents M A B. The third row and the third column represents R B one. The fourth row and the fourth column represents M B A. Let us multiply all of the terms with 1.5. For our own convenience, let us keep E A outside. From this matrix, we have to take the stiffness matrix elements outside. We know that our first coordinate is in the point B. We know that the coordinate represents the moment. In the point B, we have the moment M B A. In this matrix, this is the row and this is the column that represents M B A, which is in the first coordinate. So let us mark the row and column as one. Let us strike out other columns and rows. We don't want R A. We don't want M A B. We don't want R B one. So the remaining is one. That is K one one. One into E I. We will get E I. Now let us make the stiffness matrix for the span B C. The moment of inertia for the span B C is two I. So instead of E I, we have to apply two E I. Length of the span B C is four. So instead of L, let us apply four in all of the elements. In the span B C, we have R B two, M B C, M C B, and R C. We know that the first row and column represents R B two. The second row and the second column represents M B C. The third row and the third column represents R C. The fourth row and the fourth column represents M C B. From this matrix, we have to take the stiffness matrix elements outside. We know that our coordinates are in the points B and C, and we know that the coordinates represents the moments. In the first coordinate, we have the moment M P C. which represents the second row and the second column so let us mark the second row and the second column as 1 because it is in the first coordinate in the second coordinate we have the moment mcb which represents the fourth row and the fourth column so let us mark the fourth row and the fourth column as 2 because mcb is located in the second coordinate now let us strike out unwanted rows and columns we don't want rb2 so let us strike the first row and the first column and we don't want rc so let us strike out the third row and the third column now let us take the remaining outside we have k11 which is 2 but outside we have ei so 2 ei here we have 1 which is k12 1 into ei we will have ei here we have 1 it is k21 1 into ei we will have ei finally here we have 2 which is k22 Two into E I, we will get two E I. Now let us make the stiffness matrix. We have found K one one two times, so we have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting three E I. Then let us apply the values of K one two, K two one, K two two. For our own convenience, let us keep E I outside. In this formula, we have found everything. Let us apply them. E I inverse is one upon E I. 
we can add these two matrices after adding we will get this for this matrix we have to find the inverse we can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse if you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator see the description below there is a link you can click the link and watch the video i have used the calculator and got the inverse now we can multiply these two matrices after multiplying we will have the values of theta b and theta c now let us find the final moments and the vertical reactions the formula is p of is equal to k s into delta s plus p fixed p of is the final reactions and moments ks is the stiffness matrix for the span delta s is the displacement in the span p fixed is the fixed end reactions and moments we know that in the span ab we have to find the reactions ra rb1 and the moments mab and mba we have already found the stiffness matrix for the span ab let us apply that now let us make the system displacement matrix we know that we have the coordinates in the points b and c and we have found theta b and theta c in the first coordinate b we have the moment mba for the moment mba we have to apply the displacement theta b 4 upon ei we can keep 1 upon ei outside for the remaining values, we can simply enter 0. For the span AB, initially, we have calculated the fixed end reactions and the fixed end movements. Let us apply them. We can eliminate EI. When we multiply these two matrices, we will get this matrix. Now, we can add these two matrices so that we will get the final reactions and the movements now let us find the final reactions and the movements in the span bc for the span bc we have found the stiffness matrix let us apply that now let us make the displacement matrix in the first coordinate we have theta b mbc is in the first coordinate so for mbc we have to apply the value of theta b in the second coordinate we have theta c mcb is located in the second coordinate so we have to apply theta c the remaining values we can apply zero also we know that the coordinates only represents the movements not the reactions let us apply the fixed end reactions and movements for the span BC, which we have found initially. Let us multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we will get this matrix. After adding these two matrices, we are getting the final reactions and the movements. In this analysis, we have calculated the movements and the reactions. To get RB, we have to add RB1 and RB2 so that we will get 48.67 kN. Here you can see the shear force diagram. We can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. For that, first we have to make the free moment diagram. Assuming every span as a separate simply supported beam and using these formulas, then using the direction of the end movements we can draw the end movement diagram then we can combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending moment diagram i have analyzed the same beam by stiffness matrix method slope deflection method three moment equation method flexibility matrix method and moment distribution method all of the links are given below. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.